Welcome to our electron line. Now we're ready to start describing the motion of electron in a hydrogen atom using the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation, of course, is a differential equation for the wave function that describes the electron motion. Now, we're going to go from what we did before, from one-dimensional motion to three-dimensional motion. If you imagine that the atom is right here somewhere with the nucleus at the center and the electron moving around the nucleus somehow, we have to describe its position. Of course, we can start from Cartesian coordinates at x, y, z, and then the Schrodinger equation would look like this. Now here we have u as being the potential energy, which is defined by the Coulomb, uh, the Coulomb law. If we then integrate over distance from infinity to the position of the electron, we get the potential energy to be minus k e squared over r. E squared is the product of the charge of the electron and the charge of the nucleus in the hydrogen atom. We can, of course, also write k as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. Now that we have that, we can then go ahead and begin to think about how we should convert that from Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates because they do make a lot more sense. Then r would be the distance from the origin to the electron. Then we have the azimuth angle, we call that phi, which goes in the xy plane. And then we have the theta angle, which is the angle from the vertical z to the position of the electron. Now the conversion equations are as follows. R is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is the uh, Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Then theta can be described as the inverse cosine of z over r. Now if you take this distance from the xy plane to the position of the electron, we take that z, we move it over here, and then we take the cosine of the angle theta, that would be defined as z over r, r being the hypotenuse, and therefore theta is the inverse cosine of z over r, r of course can be written as this. And finally we have the angle phi, which is the, the azimuth angle, which can be written as the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side, so the distance from there to there, x is the same as from there to there, and then we have the distance y, y is opposite the angle phi, so when we take the inverse tangent would take the opposite side over the adjacent side. So now we're ready to take these conversions and turn our, our what we call Cartesian Schrodinger equation or Cartesian formatted Schrodinger equation into the spherical coordinates and we'll show you how to do that in the next video.